Every year, Sin City, Nevada welcomes the Great American Off-Road Race. The bright lights and sounds of the world-famous Las Vegas Strip temporarily drowned out by the roar of 850-horsepower unlimited trick trucks roaring across the desert at speeds nearing 140 miles an hour. From bone-jarring terrain to high-speed passes, exasperating equipment failure to spectacular rollovers, this is the premier off-road race that draws fans of all ages, celebrities, and the top drivers in the world. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Everybody, Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you once again to just beyond the inviting and luminous Sin City limits of Las Vegas to the dry desert landscape near Prim, Nevada. This is the most prestigious off-road race in America. We've been celebrating in downtown Las Vegas all week, but today is race day. Nearly 60 unlimited class trick trucks have shown up to compete at the 2015 Polaris Razor Mint 400, now in its 48th running starting back in 1967. There is a new course from last year's four-lap 100-mile circuit. This year, the official start of the race is being held at the Prim Valley Resort and Casino, right on the California and Nevada border. The green flag is about to drop, so how about we kick back and check in for more on the format of this high-caliber, legendary off-road event with Lee Dippy and Ricky Johnson. Sal, thanks very much. Some 60 unlimited trick trucks taking to the field this year. Ricky, one of the big changes, uh, it's a little shorter in 2015. Last year, four 100 mile laps. This year, three laps of 120 miles each. That's right, Lee. So the only really change is gonna be pitch strategy because you have a lap of 120 miles. The drivers will start two by two and the fastest driver with the corrected time at the end wins the race. Time now for the GoPro course preview. 20 miles south of Las Vegas lies some of the most inhospitable desert on the planet. And that's where the Mint 400 takes place. It all starts at the Mint 400 Prim Valley start finish line in Prim, Nevada. This is a brand new feature to the Mint this year, and there's a fantastic infield section that lets the fans see the action up close. A crowd of 20,000 has shown up today to see an incredible field of trucks compete at this year's race. This is also the main pit area where most of the teams will handle their fuel and tires as the race goes on. From the start, the trucks rocket their way out into the desert, and this year they'll hit the warp zone at race mile 20. This is an all-out speed zone where the trucks exceed 140 miles per hour on this dry lake bed. They come around the backside of the mountain range next and hit the thumpers, a series of dangerous rolling whoops. The trick here is to stay fast and on top of these bumps, or you'll get bucked and could tumble. Shortly after, thumpers is pit A at race mile 37. Coming out of pit A, they hit the Fox Proving Grounds. Now, this is one of the nastiest sections of the course and is absolutely brutal on the suspensions of these race trucks. From there, we move to the Rigid Industries Quarry at race mile 45, which is the only stadium-style section of race course in desert racing. Next, it's on to Rockets, which is the second dry lake bed on the course. This is another high-speed zone and dust is always a factor here as the trucks make huge clouds of silt while they race across the lake bed. Then comes pit B at race mile 81. Again, another opportunity to grab fuel, tires, water, or make any repairs that are needed. 20 miles later, it's the Joshua Tree Highway, which is beautiful, but very tricky to navigate at speed. Then it's a dash back down to the start finish at the main pit area at Prim Valley, and back out on the course for two more laps. 
So it's almost time to get going, but before we do, let's join Kelly Stavist, who is down on the starting line with a rundown on this field. Ask any one of these drivers and they'll tell you this is the most stacked field in off-road racing history. It's loaded with talent and just about anyone could win this thing. We'll highlight just a few. Starting back in the fifth row, it's two of the young stars of this sport. Bryce Menzies, who won this event back in 2013, alongside last year's Mint 400 winner, Andy McMillan. Ahead of them, Justin Lofton, a former NASCAR truck driver, alongside Robbie Gordon, one of the biggest names in off-road racing. Ahead of them in row three, you've got Jason Voss, the defending series champion, alongside Rob McCachron, one of the most accomplished racers in off-road history. Then, ballistic BJ Baldwin, always a threat to win one of these off-road events, alongside the young Luke McMillan, who surprised the field when he qualified third. The man who will lead them all to the green flag, Dale Dondell. He now has eight consecutive best in the desert pole positions. He has yet to convert one of those into a win, but there's no better place to do it than at the biggest race of the season, the Polaris Mint 400. Kelly, thank you. Yep, yeah, here at the official start finish line in Prim Valley, Nevada, ready to get going. And Ricky, as we see Dale Dondell, our fastest qualifier and pole sitter, if you wish, get going. How big an advantage is that to have that clear air? Well, for one, he's not starting side by side, so he can run whatever line he wants. You can see how much dust there is already, so that is a huge advantage for Dale. Dale has been one of those guys that has been burning down qualifying, but hasn't had the finishes quite like he'd like. And here at the Prim Valley Short Course, quite a unique way to get going for the Mint 400. A lot of these drivers race the Short Course Series, either for Lucas or the Torque Series, so they have a lot of experience on this track. Next up, BJ Baldwin alongside Luke McMillan. BJ on the inside. An interesting fact that Luke McMillan is driving a Dale Dondell racer chassis. He's been very happy with that. And right now, you see him pulling in front of ballistic BJ Baldwin. So McMillan gets away to the best start here against that head to head. So he'll have an advantage on BJ early on, or will he? BJ looking underneath, but right now the drivers are being a little bit, you know, courteous because they've got a lot of racing to go out in front of them. A long day ahead, and somebody who knows that all too well who wants to get going early is veteran Rob McCachron, who has won just about everything except, Ricky, this one. Rob McCachron is a legend in off-road racing. He's racing against Jason Voss, who has done very, very well in the best in the desert races. So you can see the short course veteran got the whole shot. Yeah, Jason had the advantage in qualifying by just a few tenths of a second, but Rob Mack off to a terrific start. Next lineup is an interesting one. The former teammates, Justin Lofton and Robbie Gordon. Justin Lofton on the inside in a brand new Jimco trophy truck. Justin has been very successful in class one, now making the step to trophy truck and getting an advantage on Robbie Gordon. You see on the inside there, Rob McCachron and Voss off on their private little battle. And the amount of times these two guys have raced together in Robbie Gordon Stadium Super Truck Series will make this one an interesting matchup and often wants to get away to a good start in his new truck. And here we see another short course driver, Bryce Messi, jumping the start. Amy Scott there, of course, the 2015 Miss Mint 400, but Menzies gets away to a good one. Your old teammate, uh, Ricky, and you know how keen he is to win this for the second time. And right behind him is Andy McMillan, last year's winner. So Bryce and Andy have won the past two years, and now we're going head-to-head -head with a slight advantage going to Bryce Menzies. As Ricky said earlier, strategy's going to play key. Both these guys know how important that is, so we'll see how the day plays out for them. Lalo Laguna on the right of screen in the Class 1 buggy up against Tavo Vildosola. Lalo was the top qualifying buggy, and that's the way it goes here in Best in the Desert. If you're fast enough, you can run up there with the trick trucks. There's our leader early on in the Mint 400 for 2015, Dale Dondell, the fastest qualifier. Clear air and a clear run ahead. Stick around, so much more to come here at the 2015 Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. No stranger to desert and truck racing, Bryce Menzies won the Mint 400 in 2013. Last year, ran into a number of mechanical problems and had a disappointing finish. But Bryce continues to dominate behind the wheel, and after back-to-back-to-back Pro 2 Torque Championships and Baja 500 Championships, he has now added the Pro 4 into his repertoire for the 2015 Lucas Oil Off-Road Series. Bryce takes part in all of the preparations of his ride for this very grueling event, and the Las Vegas native would like nothing more than to win here and once again be the hometown hero. The Mint 400 has to be one of the toughest races that we do all year, just because it's three laps at 120 miles. 
and the course gets so chewed up that it, it really wears on your truck. So preparation for this race is huge, and we spend a lot of time with our engine builder, Kevin Croyer, coming out here and making sure everything's going good here. Everything has to come together and work properly throughout that whole race. The engines, our transmissions, all of our drivetrain, and uh, that's a huge part of off-road is keeping those together and lasting throughout these long races. With Kevin Croyer and Pennzoil, you know, working together a little bit, it really helps out with our engine package to know that we have the best product out there. Oil is it's a critical part of what we do. Um, having the lubrication system correct on the engine, feeding all of the bearings, and then also, besides lubrication properties, cooling the insides of the engine. Um, most people think that the water does the cooling. It does certainly do some of that, but uh, engine oil is critical in that operation. The level of competition in off-road nowadays is it's huge, and it's coming down to minutes that we're winning these races. So I think the biggest key to us is being prepared and uh, knowing exactly what we're up against before we get into the race. Kevin Croyer not only does the motors, but does the transmissions too, so it's a complete package with Croyer Engineering. And when they run out in the desert, they're running sometimes up to 8,000 RPM and also on speeds of 140 miles an hour, so everything has to hold together. All right, let's take a look at our top 10 early on. Very easy to see who our leader is, Dale Dondell. BJ Baldwin in second, Rob McEachran over Robbie Gordon as we join our race leader. And off to a good, smooth start for Dale Dondell. Well, the thing that's different about the Mint 400 versus Mexico and racing the Baja 1000 and the Baja 500 is you only get one sight lap, so they're running off of their GPS and what they can see. Already Dale Dondell at race mile 33 of this first of three 120 mile laps. Here's BJ Baldwin. BJ Baldwin, a local in Vegas. That's where we talked about Bryce Menzies, uh, BJ Baldwin, the local boys. They want to be the hometown heroes, but they know this desert better than anybody. Riding on board with Rob McCachron. Check out co-driver with the GPS. So much to do for both people in the cockpit. Well, at 100 miles an hour, you might think, oh, I could just watch the GPS. But if you're off by one or two feet, you're out in the rocks. How much do you think he wants to win this one, Ricky, considering it's the only one he hasn't won? Rob Mack has won pretty much every race on the planet. But like you say, Lee, he definitely wants this mid 400 trophy. And a driver who just blends his racecraft to so many different circuits and venues and surfaces, Robbie Gordon. A great story about this trick truck, Lee, is it started out as a 6100, and now they've bumped it up to a full-on trick truck, and he's driving for Clyde Stacy one more time. Driving and driving fast is the 33-year-old Mexican Tavo Vildosla. Tavo, there's nothing about pace. This guy runs so hard and so aggressive. He's awesome to watch. Fellow Red Bull truck driver Bryce Menzies, remember the gut-wrenching exit he had last year after hitting that rock. The mantra that you have to have to finish first, you first must finish, but you have to race the whole time. Great shot illustrating the raw speed with these unlimited trick trucks. Let's go on board with the GoPro onboard camera just to show you how fast. And watch the GPS carefully for the numbers. More than 110 miles per hour. What I like about this Mint 400 track, and Casey Folks and the Martelli brothers have done an awesome job, is it's so rough, but it's very predictable because it's, it is that just brutal desert. BJ Baldwin, a Mint 400 winner himself, is Rob McCachran. And they're getting close to pit A. And Ricky, this is where we start to talk about strategy. It's whatever you need. A lot of times the drivers are running hard, trying to get up in front and pass some of the guys so they'll wear their tires out. Once they get settled in, they just kind of ride and hopefully they can skip one tire stop and just take fuel. Bryce Menzies, so far, so good. And Andy McMillan doing the chasing, the two guys who started together. Back to our race leader, Dale Dondell, and just look at how hard that suspension's getting worked. The suspension, tires, motor, tranny, everything is getting worked, and Dondell has the manual transmission, which is a little quicker on the short straightaways. 22-year-old Californian, Luke McMillan, pushing it through the proving grounds as we ride with Baldwin. As we look back, we see BJ has two spares. Keep in mind, Lee, those are 150 pounds each. Robbie Gordon, well-placed early on, in fourth at the moment. Here's the GoPro on board with Bryce Menzies through the Fox Proving Grounds. This is a hard section, Ricky. Definitely beats up the truck and tires, but Bryce handling it perfectly. 
And continuing to chase Bryce Menzies, the man he started with, Andy McMillan, the defending mid 400 winner. Andy McMillan has won the 1,000 in last year's mid 400, so he knows exactly what he needs. And last year, did not get one flat. Justin Lofton, a Camping World Truck Series winner, and really starting to make himself known as an off-road truck racer. Well, he was a champion in the Class 1 buggies, but now he's moved to Trick Truck, and here we seem to have a little bit of problem on the dry light. Co-driver's getting out already. Is this a puncture? Nine times out of 10 in the mint with these rocks, it is a flat. Here we see the co-driver going to the spare. He has to change that. Once again, 150 pound tire, but he can't just leave the flat in the desert. He has to put it back on the rack or you'll get a time penalty. Troubles for Lofton. No worries for our leader, Dale Dondell. We'll see how he goes when we come back to the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. And let's update you on how the top 10 looks at the moment. Our leader has not changed, Dale Dondell, who was the fastest qualifier. Big change, though, at the top with Rob McCachran getting by BJ Baldwin and Gordon and Bill Dosler still maintain their positions in the top five. The top five is starting to sort themselves out, but only they know if their truck is sounding good, feeling good, and if they've hit any big obstacles along the way. Just, you know, it could knock the steering out a little bit or put some undue stress on the chassis. Here we see Dale Dondell. You're wondering why is he passing another car? Because that was a race that went on earlier today. And job done. Work complete for that flat tire for Justin Lofton. In the background, you see competitors getting by. That'll be rubbing salt into the wounds. Look in the dictionary under eternity, and there's a picture of a driver waiting for his co-driver to change his tire, even if it's only a couple minutes, because you feel like it's taking forever. Justin and his team really wanted to make impact with this new truck this year. Oh, drama's here. Problems for Luke McMillan. Luke McMillan was running very strong, but this is a new truck, and so sometimes you have some teething pains, and definitely that's what Luke is going through right there. The hood is off. Who knows what's going wrong? And that is going to be very costly time-wise for Luke McMillan, the young Californian. We see the hood off, and we see the co-driver stepping out from under the vehicle. A lot of times, you'll feel a knocking in the motor, and it could be a bent driveline. Here we see Luke taking another look back there. That's probably the cause. Ricky, when we see guys like BJ Baldwin just flying through these bumps, looks relatively smooth. What's it like in the cockpit? It's a combination of an offshore boat, a jet, and a Ferrari all mixed into one. These things are the most ultimate vehicles with 37 to 39 inch tires and 800 horsepower. From Baldwin to Menzies and Bryce, made a good start. He's running well and truly in the top 10, solidly so. And that helicopter following close by, his dad, Steve, is actually in that. Yeah, Steve is one of those guys that just loves his son to the moon and the stars and back again. And at this point, he's basically riding with him, not just above him. GoPro in car. Choice words by Bryce. He knew exactly what happened when he hit that rock because you don't just hear the tire hit, but you hear a metallic bink, and you know that you've sliced the tire and you got a flat. Pete is going to get out, one of the best co riders out there because he's unbelievable on GPS, but he can change a tire sometimes in under two minutes. Here we see Bryce getting the impact wrench ready. And what'll happen is Pete jacked up the truck, he takes the tire off, which, like I said, 150 pounds, you got to manage this thing off of there, and he'll get it onto the truck put the flat tire back on the spare rack before they can take off. And in the background, here comes Andy McMillan. He's been chasing Menzies right from the start. And Bryce has to sit there and watch the defending Mint 400 champ go by. 
Well, as a driver, you just think of how much work you've had to do, and he also realized how big of a lead he had on Andy, so he knows that he has a little bit quicker pace, and he's got to catch him one more time. Problems already for two of the big names, Justin Loft and Bryce Menzies, with flat tires. What's going to happen when we come back? You're watching the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. And nearing the end of the first of three 120-mile laps is leader Dale Dondell. And that takes us to the top 10 and take a look at some positional changes there. Sean Kroll has made his way up to seventh and Lalo Laguna is now in the top eight in that class one buggy. Here he is, the leader, and he has not been headed. Started alone and has had good clear track ever since. At this point, Dale comes back into Prim Valley. He's done a complete lap and he knows what's in store for him, so he knows everything, how his truck is feeling and what the course is like. And Ricky, what a relief coming to the end of that first lap. You can see the Prim Valley Resort in the background coming to that main pit area. A third race distance already done for the leader, Dale Dondell. This has got to be nice, cruising back into the pits, knowing that you're leading. Yep, give, give a little thumbs up, and you know that everybody's already started, so you have more clear air in front of you. So right now, you're giving a little input to the team. What do you want to change, and what do they need to look at? It's an opportunity to rehydrate as well, grab a quick drink, clear and clean that visor, regroup, and get ready to go out again. By having that lead, I would take on rear tires just because I want to make sure I got fresh tires in case somebody's ahead of me on corrected time, I can push hard. And you can see they got the back jacked up, they're going with the fuel, give a little hydration for the drivers, and they'll be off in just a minute. And this is the man doing the chasing, BJ Baldwin, as he enters the main pit area, finishing his opening lap of three. He's in a good position as well because on corrected time, he can get very close to Dale and beat him, so he does not have to overtake him physically to win this race. Looks to be a little bit of extra attention in that rear left side for Dale Dondell's trick truck. We'll keep an eye on that. What a driver does when they're coming into the pit, they run down the list what they want. Do they want food? Do they want water? Any vibrations on the truck? Anything to look at so that the crew can jump right on top of it. What did you like to do, Ricky, was what was most important first? Feedback to the team on what needs to be changed? Exactly. I was hoping that everything was running great, just give me some fuel and go, but at the Mint 400, a lot of times you need tires. Third place, Rob McCachran makes his way toward the main pit, and not too far behind is fourth place overall, Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon doing a great job making it back to Prim. Everything looks straight. The wheels are tracking. The body's all intact. So Robbie Gordon doing an awesome job wheeling it as he always does. What a change of scenery for Robbie too, stepping away from his regular Robbie Gordon Stadium Super Truck Series. And this man here, the Mexican Tavo Vildosler in the Red Bull Trick Truck has made very solid progress on the opening lap of three. Tavo has had to deal with some dust in certain situations, but here we see BJ passing Dale Dondale and is now physically the leader of the Mint 400. What is happening at the Dondell pit? And that's what Dale's saying. Come on. Well, you got to understand, Dale is a mechanic, a designer, a builder. He knows everything about these trucks, and so he's very frustrated as a driver not knowing what's going on behind him. This is Rob McCachran's pit. Just listen to how frantic it is. GoPro on board. Get that visor clear. Grab some fluids. Rehydrate. The important thing for the driver at this point is to start the hydration and keep your nutrition up because you don't know if you've gone too far until you've gone too far. So somebody like Rob McCachran has done this so many times, he knows the importance of keeping himself hydrated during this race. And that looked like a nice stop. Very nice stop. A couple extra sips of water. Rob's taking care of his body first, and then next thing you know, back out on the track.
just to the right, you see Dale Dondell pull out ahead of Rob McCachran. Boy, the frustration inside that helmet, inside that cockpit, must be immense. There's a speed limit in the pit, and you can see Rob back doing a little push on Dale, letting him know, keep up to speed. So two things that he's dealing with. One, he knows that BJ Baldwin is now the physical leader, and he wants to try to jump past Dale Dondell as soon as it goes green. So what you're saying is let the mind games begin. Oh, and off goes Dondell to the right. Dale Dondell has gone the wrong way. And his co-driver says, get back there, back there, and there goes Rob Mack. Boy, there is going to be some angry drivers here as soon as we go green. And our new Mint 400 leader hitting the dike jump is BJ Baldwin. He just got a massive gift, Ricky. BJ Baldwin knows what it takes to win this race, and right now he's got clean air. BJ is one of those guys that loves the longer, more punishing race and likes to get out in front. And here we see Dale Dondell trying to get back because, remember, Dale was the fastest qualifier and the fastest truck, but when you're in the dust, if you can't see, you can't race. Oh, how his view has changed. The man who led the entire opening lap of this year's Mint 400 is now a chaser. Oh, trouble for Dale Dondell. Something broke, but obviously he was in the dust pushing. Might have caught a rock. We don't know if it's a drive line, a brake line. It could be anything. It could also be something that was associated with that very extended and prolonged pit stop. The fast qualifier and leader of the first lap, Dale Dondell, on the sidelines. Attrition, of course, is a part of any competition, but in desert racing, it bites extra hard as well. And the man who seemed, Ricky, to have a perfect opening lap, it's all starting to unravel. So issues for Dale Dondell, but more serious issues for other competitors out on track. You can see a red flag being displayed there. There has been an accident involving three vehicles. And in an unprecedented fashion, the Mint 400 has been brought to a stop for the first time in the event's history. Race organizers have prevented the front runners from going out for the moment to begin their second lap. And in amongst them is Kelly Stavis. Let's go to Kelly. BJ Baldwin, the first one through the first uh, first lap here, unexpected break, but how have things gone to plan so far? Uh, things are going exactly as planned. You know, we've been taking it pretty easy the first lap. Obviously, that's done well for us. I mean, we're first car on the road. We're leading the race physically. Um, we don't have a radio, so we don't know how hard to run. Uh, our radio broke, so that's, that's kind of an unfortunate thing. So we don't know how close everybody is behind us. So I think we're just going to try and get all the information that we can nonverbal from the pit and then run really hard on the last lap. As a driver in the past, Lee, a lot of things draw red flags. BJ Baldwin, as he says, has no communication, so he doesn't know how hard to run, but he is leading on corrected and physically. The other thing is, is that racing the mid 400, you have the adrenaline dump at the beginning of the race and you plan on racing all day long. Now the drivers are out of the vehicles. They're looking at everything. Robbie Gordon doing a little touch up on his, but the race has to restart. Yeah, for the first time ever, under a red, but we will see green again shortly. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. One lap down, two to go in this classic event as we welcome you back to Prim Valley, Nevada. And under a red flag at the moment, we recap the top 10 positions for you. But first, let's check in with Kelly Stavis to get an update. An unusual circumstance here at the Mint 400. They've had to red flag the race. There was a three vehicle wreck. They've taken time to clean that up. It's out at mile marker 87, the reports that we're getting. You can see the leaders have all come in. They've been stopped and held and they're just getting ready to restart the race. They'll send these guys off back at the same time intervals in which they came in here to complete their first lap. So an unexpected break for all of these racers. Huge break, Kelly, that's for sure, and a chance to regroup, rest up, and we see our new Polaris Razor Mint 400 race leader, BJ Baldwin, Rob McCachran, everybody at the front of this field ready to go again, one third distance through. And the captain of Best in the Desert, Casey Folks, sends them back on their way. So remember, folks, it is not a complete re rack. All that hard work that you did the first lap is not in vain, and here we see the two first physical leaders. Rob McCachran and B.J. Baldwin. Out goes Robbie Gordon. 
ready to do some chasing and who was able to advance a position due to Dale Dondell's woes. However, he got a second shot at it. Race leader, BJ Baldwin, driving with a little more enthusiasm, although driving somewhat challenged with no radio. But as you heard BJ say, he's gonna run smooth because Rob Mack has to catch him and pass him. That's very hard to do in this Nevada dust. And who better to do that chasing but a Nevada native, Rob McCachran. And in third place, Robbie Gordon seems to be pushing this geyser truck right to the limits. He doesn't seem to be holding back, and he wants to get himself back up to the front to put a little pressure for the last lap. He negotiated that berm just like you back in your motocross days. I think I would have carved it a little bit more, <laughs> but I had a lot less weight going on a motorcycle. Boy, what a relief for this guy, Dale Dondell, after that stoppage. Dale Dondell was a little frustrated, had clear air, but right now he's just trying to work his way back up. Here we see a, a race between Justin Lofton and also Lalo Laguna. As you see, he comes up, gives him a little tap to let him know he's there. You see Lalo off to the side, and away goes Justin. And for Justin Lofton to be making the progress that he has after a very early puncture, this is a super comeback. No comeback, though, for Bryce Menzies. Here's Kelly. Bryce Menzies had to limp his way back here into the main pit. What happened out there, Bryce? Yeah, it's just a huge bummer. I mean, we look forward to this race all year long. It's one of our biggest ones we have. And um, we got a random left rear flat about mile 50. We fixed it, went another about 40 miles, and we felt something um, shaking in the rear end and all of a sudden the rear uh, left rear tire broke off ripped all the studs off axle came shooting out so I don't think we're gonna be able to fix it um, not the way we wanted to end this Mint 400 but uh, we'll, we'll be back next year all right Mint 400 comes to an early end for the hometown kid Lee you not only want to win for your sponsors your family and your friends but you want it for the bragging rights there's three champions BJ Baldwin Rob Mack and Bryce Menzies all come from Vegas not to mention Quite a few other drivers. And it's McCachran who's doing the chasing on BJ Baldwin at the moment. Same for Robbie Gordon chasing out after Rob Mack. However, pit stop time yet again. BJ Baldwin comes in. He's going to get a little bit of an update on how much time he has, how big his lead is, and they'll look over that truck and send him back on his way. Nice encouragement from the crew there too, just giving BJ a thumbs up. Nice work so far, but there's still a lot of work to do. Rob Mack acknowledging the crowd as he comes into his pit area, hard at work back at the Baldwin camp. If you're new to off-road racing, you have to understand these are two-wheel drive vehicles, so the two tires that are pushing are rear wheel only. So those tires get beat up and have to be changed almost at every pit. Ricky, how much of a difference does that make? How much do you feel it when you get back out on course? The main thing is the straight line acceleration. You knock down the edge of the knobby tire, but also the side to side. And with these big berms, as the trucks want to climb out, that fresh rubber keeps you on track. More than 800 horsepower. Out goes BJ Baldwin, much to the delight of the crew. They're pleased with their work, much to the disappointment, as you can see, of Rob McCachran. He was hoping to leapfrog Baldwin in the pits. A little bit of pit games. If you can make a pass in the pit, it's so much easier out on the track, just like NASCAR and every other form of racing that has a pit stop. So Baldwin maintains his position out in front as we hit the Fox Proving Grounds, and this is brutal. These bumps, they don't look that big, but you gotta remember, that's a 39-inch tire, so some of these bumps are about three feet tall. Two-time Dakar Rally competitor, six-time national off-road champion, BJ Baldwin is having a super day here in Nevada. Rob Mack in the Fox Proving Ground. Now we can see that he's in BJ's dust, so it's gotta be close on corrected time. Speaking of dust, there's Robbie Gordon in the middle of it as well, and Dale Dondell. How different the view this is through the Fox Proving Grounds for the second time. Tavo Villadosla running very, very strong as well. The track is starting to deteriorate more. Rocks are coming up, and here we see Justin Lofton coming back into the picture. Got to feel like he has a chance. He's making rapid progress. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series and the Polaris Razor Mint 400. I am your host and limited class competitor, Sal Masakella. The limited class, that in no way refers to the skill level of this class of racer. It simply means that these trucks and buggies have restrictions on their design, power, and suspension. They just can't use every resource available on the market to make their vehicles as fast as possible, which causes some to say that this class is more of an even playing field and requires more skill. Some calling this the driver's class. And I can tell you firsthand that once you get behind the wheel, the desert does not care what class you're in, limited or unlimited. The limited race starts in the cool, dark hour right before the sun comes up. There are nearly 150 racers in the morning group, and as we left the start line, the Nevada desert quickly became a battle zone. We started side by side, just like the trick trucks, and getting ahead of the truck next to you, crucial as you head out into the desert. Visibility, always a factor in desert racing. This year, the blazing sun and thick dust made navigating the course a challenge for everyone. The Mint 400 race course really does have it all. You've got your tight, twisting turns, deep, silty ruts, and of course, long, fast straightaways. And after our first lap of racing, we started to encounter some lap traffic. Passing slower vehicles and maintaining your lead, always a tricky situation. The Mint 400 attracts celebrities from around the world. And this year, actor Dax Shepard joined the fun, as well as Patrick Dempsey. He raced a 0-1 Odyssey car for his second time at the Mint. Patrick Dempsey won his class back in 2013, third this time. I know he spent a lot of time in the desert, but really your focus is on sports car racing. So what is it about an event like the Mint 400 that brings you back to the desert? Oh, the Mint 400 has such great history, you know, and um, it's really being revitalized and there's a new energy behind it. And, it, and it's a great event. It's, it, it's, it, the car count was huge this year. And it, it, just to be out here racing in these cars is a lot of fun. It really improves your car control. They're really loose handling cars. And, you know, just to be out in the desert running around, it, it's, it's really a lot of fun. And the, the terrain is constantly changing, so you're constantly active mentally of like, what is, what's coming up? What do I have to be careful of? And then the rhythm changes and you have to be in the technical stuff. So I thank KMC, you know, for the wheels for getting me here. And uh, General Ty did a great job too. Patrick Dempsey is so passionate about his racing. Ricky, think about this saying you've done the Mint 400 and the 24 hours of Le Mans in the one season. That is definitely a bucket list for any racer. But I love what Patrick was saying about you have to constantly keep your mind evolving. The track is getting rougher and rougher. The vehicle is getting more and more beat up. So you have to constantly think as a driver. And it was great to plug his sponsors at the end. BJ Baldwin knows all about endurance racing and he is showing the way right now quite convincingly. Now, if you look down on the course, you can see the little landmines, those rocks everywhere. Once they get to about bowling ball size, that's when you have to be concerned. Anything smaller than that, you just run right over them with a 39-inch tire. Rob McCachran is the chaser. place Robbie Gordon having a solid run here today in Nevada. Shadows starting to come into effect late in the day as we race lap two of the three-lap adventure that is the mid 400. You can see how diverse this course is out here in Nevada but as it gets beat up and the delay in the race the drivers are gonna have to drive under light. Dale Dondell, the man that steers this trick truck and the company Racer Engineering that builds these off-road machines. Bill Dosel is having a good run in fifth. Tavo running very, very strong. Tavo's known for being faster down in Mexico, but here in Nevada, he is on point. Watch the drivers go side to side. A lot of times, there's no tires on the ground. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two, but you're pushing it the whole time. Sean Kroll running very, very strong in sixth place. 
What's his learning curve going to be like in these trick trucks? Every lap, every turn, every bump, there's always learning something. And here we got Robbie Gordon down with a flat. Looks like he's getting some help from some spectators. Add another big name to a growing list of competitors affected by flat tyres, and Gordon loses a position to Sean Kroll. Sean Kroll is climbing the ladder of the best of the best in off-road racing. This is Justin Lofton. He, too, was affected by a flat tyre very early in this year's Mint 400. And he goes by a man he races all year long, Robbie Gordon. Justin Lofton looks very balanced and very comfortable in that Jimco trick truck. Right now, he knows where the course is going. He's got his nose set up, and he knows what the truck is feeling like underneath him. So very, very strong run for Justin Lofton. His comeback is being aided, that's for sure. He's gone past the likes of Menzies and now Gordon as BJ Baldwin comes in to pit B. We can see the sun starting to set, and that becomes very difficult for the drivers. It's actually worse as the sun goes down. When it's completely dark, you can see with the lights, but in between, it plays tricks on your mind. It might be slightly shorter this year, but it's going to be a tougher finish in the 2015 Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. You're watching the 2015 Polaris Razor Mint 400. The Mint 400 is America's oldest and most historic off-road race, but it's more than just one day of competition. The Mint 400 kicked off here midweek with the largest vehicle procession in the history of the city. Over 100 race vehicles paraded from the South Point Casino all the way down the world-famous Las Vegas Strip to Fremont Street. Thousands of off-road enthusiasts and tourists enjoyed the spectacle as these off-road machines came roaring down the strip. The next day, all of the top unlimited trick trucks lined up for the Method Race Wheels qualifying to battle for start positions on race day. Thousands of fans looked on as the top racers rocketed through the qualifying course, one after another, hoping to put down the fastest time. As you know, Dale Dondell qualified fastest, and that's why he started first today. Later that evening, the Miss Mint 400 contest was held on fabulous Fremont Street East, in front of a live audience, Amy Scott from San Diego, California was named the new Miss Mint 400, was crowned under the neon lights of Sin City. Then the top off-road mechanics in the industry battled each other during the massive KMC Wheels Pit Crew Challenge worth thousands of dollars in cash and prizes. The crews battled head-to-head -head by changing two tyres as fast as possible. In the end, it was Cops Racing in Class 1500 and Oligus Racing in the Trick Truck Class taking home the big checks. On Friday, the Mint 400 took over more than 12 square blocks of historic Fremont Street. All 330 vehicles entered in the Mint were slowly pushed through the massive off-road festival. Athletes signed autographs next to their race cars and handed out truckloads of memorabilia to the 20,000 off-road enthusiasts in attendance. It was simply a remarkable way to celebrate this sport and prepare for the great American off-road race. It's an awesome experience, Lee, because not just the city of Las Vegas, but all the fans, all the sponsors, Everybody comes out. It's one great party before one great race. And just such an historic event that is being celebrated in this modern era. A quick recap of our top 10. BJ Baldwin loves the sight of that. He's up front. Dale Dondell with that second chance on the second lap sits nicely in the top three. But everybody's chasing this man here, BJ Baldwin. BJ's a very dangerous driver when he's out in front and very confident. He knows he's got the right fitness because BJ's one of those guys that prepares for the long race. So he knows that he's going to be there physically, and he's also got a very well-prepared truck. So right now, he's the man to beat. And preparing for the darkness that is fast approaching here in Nevada. Rob McCacker will be ready for that as he continues his chase. As you watch Rob go through these ruts, you can see the shadows, and they start to play tricks on you. Is that a rock in the hole, or is that just the shadow? It's really, really difficult when you're driving to pick what you can hit and what you can't hit. GoPro on board shows us firsthand. You just got to go with your instinct like that, Ricky. 
Well, you're going off your GPS, your driver's letting you know if you got a 45, 90, or 180 right or left, and also some of the danger marks out there. But this is a situation where you're lapping the other cars coming around, and this here's where we see Dale Don Dale having to work through lap traffic. Led for the entire opening lap of the three-lap, 120-mile per lap adventure that is the Mint 400. It's been quite the comeback for Dale Dondell in the 2015 Polaris Razor Mint 400. It's part of the Red Bull Signature Series, and we are far from done. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. You're watching the 2015 Polaris Razor Mint 400. If you're new to the sport of off-road desert racing, you may be asking yourself, what is a trick truck? Well, let's take a closer look at the weapon of choice for Tavo Vildosola. This remarkable machine is an unlimited trick truck. It's a hand-built masterpiece by Dave Clark for Vildosola Racing. It's based on a Ford Raptor body style and features a 454 cubic inch Dugans engine that puts out over 850 horsepower. Everything on this truck is customized to survive the brutal desert racing conditions. Check out that suspension. Those are 4.5 inch King Bypass shocks that give Tavo 32 inches of front wheel travel and a full three feet of rear suspension travel. These trucks can travel at 140 miles per hour over three foot rocks and obstacles without skipping a beat. The modern trick truck is a special breed of race engineering that there are less than 100 of these vehicles in competition today. To watch this feature and other exclusive content from the Red Bull Signature Series, download Samsung's Milk Video on Google Play. Updating the leaderboard and BJ Baldwin continues to lead. But if you look a little further down, Justin Lofton continues to creep his way forward. What a day it's been for every competitor, but particularly for this man, BJ Baldwin, passing a slower competitor there as he nears the end of his second lap, just one to go. He hasn't been out in front the whole way, but he has for the majority of this second lap. Rob McCachran, as they come into the main pit area, first and second. Wooly, we've all driven into the sunset and it's unbelievable how much you cannot see. Imagine the dust from an 800 horsepower truck. Now both of these drivers are coming in, so it could be a game of who has the quickest pit stop. And as we've seen today multiple times, positions can be won and lost, as Steve Serapis knows, with Rob McCachran waiting and ready. Steve Serapis, a fierce competitor. I had a great race with him in 1992 in the Mint 400 where he won Class 10. Look at this game going on here. McCachran just pressuring and hounding BJ Baldwin, but he arrives at his pit first. Lee, at this point, it's a game of inches and seconds. If you can get in and out of your pit, it could change the whole outcome of this last lap. It's a thorn in Rob McCachran's side that he has not yet won the Mint 400. Think about that. He's from Nevada. This is the one big one that's not being checked off the list. BJ Baldwin into his pit, but nobody's coming up to the truck. Something has gone wrong. BJ's taking his time. Everyone's walking up very casually. And now we see the co-rider getting out of the truck. This is incredible. There's no sense of urgency. The race leader, BJ Baldwin, something has gone amiss. And Rob Mack has got probably the greatest gift that he could get all day, and that's clean air going into the last lap. As he makes his way out of the main pit area, there is BJ Baldwin's trick truck off to the left. Rob McCachran is the new Mint 400 leader. This is incredible. Dale Dondell saw BJ Baldwin go by at the end of lap one. Now BJ himself sees Rob McCachran go by at the end of lap two. Time to check in with Kelly. Headed into the main pit area, BJ Baldwin had about a 10 second lead over Rob McCachran. But remember, this is a team sport and it was up to the crews to get those trucks serviced and back out on the track as quickly as possible. We already saw Rob McCachran come through the Red Bull Arch, which means he has overtaken BJ Baldwin. We should see BJ, who already has a Mint 400 title on his resume, coming through that arch any moment now. 
Well, Cal, that's the question we're waiting to be answered. When will BJ Baldwin go through the Red Bull Arch? I'm going to suspect it's something with the transmission because they have the rear end up and they're also looking under the center of the vehicle. So I don't think it's motor because it sounded clear when he came into the pit, but something in the drive line is gone afoul. So after Dale Dondell saw his lead evaporate earlier in the day, he's going to get one back and he will move up to second outright. Justin Lofton with the earlier flat continues to climb his way back up the leaderboard, now currently sitting in third place. A very, very strong race at this point for Justin Lofton. Yeah, he continues that march, doesn't he, in the new Jimco trick truck. What a story it is so far for Justin Lofton to be up into the top three. Robbie Gordon, who also had a, an earlier flat, has continued to punch his way back as well. He sits fourth, but this is the story of the moment. The stranded BJ Baldwin. Is this day done or can he get back out? BJ has not submitted. He's not out of the truck. His helmet's off. They're working on it. But right now, he has lost the lead. It is all setting up for a fantastic finish. You're watching the Polaris Razor Mid 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series, and this is the Polaris Razor Mid 400. Big story of the day, BJ Baldwin leading all of lap two, but he has been bounced out. Is it permanent? Kelly Stavis tells us. BJ Baldwin has experienced both triumph and heartbreak in the Mint 400. This race looks to end in the latter. BJ, you led much of this race. Where did it go wrong? Uh, well, you know what? We had a pretty conservative first lap, and then uh, we really, you know, charged hard the second lap. We were, we were able to uh, lead by a little over two minutes for most of the lap. And then uh, we lost the transmission coming in the last 15 miles of the last lap. But, uh, you know, we're going to change it. We're going to have 50 minutes of downtime. There's no way I can make that up. But uh, I'm going to try like hell, and uh, I'm going to have a good time this last lap and just beat this thing as hard as I can. No quit from B.J. Baldwin. A unique situation for B.J. Baldwin, a blown transmission, but now he gets to go out and give 100% checkers or wreckers, and he's taken a glorious beard with him. And the team not giving up. A quick snapshot of the top 10 and how it's changed so rapidly. Rob McCachron, now the new leader. Dale Dondell and Justin Lofton continues his charge. Here's one of the class one buggies. This is Lalo Laguna, up to sixth overall. The sun is set, but the sky is still very bright. Makes it really hard for the drivers. And what a story this is. Medal of Honor recipient, this is Dakota Meyer. Through my travels, I've had the honor to become friends with Dakota over the years. It's great to see him in a race car. Late in the day, Jerry Welchel has worked his way up to seventh outright. Jerry in the Youth Theory Trick Truck has come out of 6,100 and running strong. Also in the top 10 is Abdali Lopez. Just look how dark things are getting. Teammate to Lala Laguna and Robbie Gordon in this race. RPM Racing is well represented. Unfortunately, Andy McMillan suffered some adversity earlier in the race. Luke McMillan is still punching on in the top 10. We saw Luke with the hood off earlier, but they seem to have got the problem fixed and still running strong. Take us inside the cockpit. Right here, right now, with this daylight, we're in that weird transitional phase, Ricky. I like it when the sun is completely gone, no light in the sky, but the moon is out. That makes it best for nighttime driving. And now we're going to race into darkness because for the first time ever, the Mint 400 was stopped momentarily for an accident where three cars were involved at the end of the opening lap. And Rob McCachron, who has been in the top five, in the top three, now the leader. This has been a great day for the Nevada native. Sitting back in your chair watching this race, you might think that it becomes easier because the drivers have been over it time and time again. But right now, the truck is getting so beat up from the horsepower, suspension, and tires that it's a completely different racetrack every time around. Dale Dondell's trick truck, if you look to the left, showing a little bit of bodywork damage. Ah, uh, but that's just fiberglass. It's not like NASCAR where there's metal. So these things are designed so that if any bodywork comes off, it doesn't impel a driver, it doesn't cut the tires. So a lot of times, if you're banging through the woods and stuff like that, or banging on another driver, you might knock a fender off. But it's strictly cosmetic. That thing is working perfectly. 
over this multi-lap run. Remember, three laps at 120 miles per lap. Are you looking for the same things lap after lap in that section of the track, Ricky? And then things may take you a surprise as the track evolves? Well, you remember what got, how rough it was the first lap, how rough it got the second lap. Sometimes you have some hard G outs that'll knock the wind out of the drivers. But right now, what you're trying to focus on is getting to the finish. You want to make sure that you attack every turn and not put your mind too far ahead, but keep that in mind. Justin Lofton, who had to fight hard just to stay in the top 10, thanks to a early puncture, an early flat tire, has staged a remarkable comeback. Lee, this is no surprise. Justin Lofton has been competitive in every racing series he's ever driven in. He's driven in stadium super truck, he's driven in class one, he's driven in NASCAR, always a threat. Here we see that Jemco trick truck with about three feet of front wheel travel, and Justin is running very strong. Now, one of the things that a driver has to think about in this 400 mile race is shock fade. Because you're working these shocks so hard and the pistons are going up and down like a motor, they get hot and they fade. But right now, that Jimco Trophy truck is working flawlessly. The 27 year old Californian does some tremendous charity work as well for the Boys and Girls Club. And he will have some extra fans cheering him on, but he's going to need it because Rob McCachran continues to go from strength to strength. And it could be one of our big storylines today if he wins this event for the first time ever. As Walker Evans said in Dust of Glory, you're out there racing against time itself. As visibility fades away here, we can't forget the guys who started before the sun came up today. This morning at six o'clock, there was a limited class race. And in that group is one of the most talked about and fastest growing classes in off-road racing today, class 1900 or UTVs. Nearly 60 UTVs left the start line early today, and just look at all the dust they had to contend with. There were some great battles between Polaris drivers Johnny Angle and Brandon Sims. Angle, who won the Baja 1000 last year, opened up a sizable lead early on. He was reeled in by Dustin Jones towards the end of lap one. RJ Anderson in his Polaris Razor passed over 10 competitors as he worked his way towards the front of the pack. While 2014 men champion Brandon Schuler fought hard to work his way into fourth place by the final lap. Ryan Pullman stayed ahead of the champ and ended up in third place for the day. And there was drama at the finish line. Johnny Angle lost his motor a mere two miles from the finish and watched helplessly as Dustin Jones passed him by, taking the chequered flag and winning the Polaris Razor Mint 400 UTV class. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series and the Polaris Razor Mint 400. I am your host, Sal Masekela. Today, we come to you from the desert outskirts of Las Vegas, Nevada, but this is merely one stop and one sport as we scour the globe in search of the very best sports disciplines. Every season, all climates and terrain, desert, mountains, from sea to shining sea. We have some new events in store for you this season, and as usual, no location is too remote if it means that we're covering the best competitions featuring the top athletes in the world performing the most incredible feats known to man. The Red Bull Signature Series, a collection of action sports events unlike anything you've seen before. Since 2012, the Red Bull Signature Series has brought you the absolute best in action sports. Shoot back! The excitement continues in 2015 when we deliver an all new season of the Red Bull Signature Series. Oh my! Bringing you the best action on the best courses from inspiring locations around the world. Join us all year long as we witness top athletes compete in the most progressive and innovative sporting events on the planet. Wow, that move incredibly hard. Judges are gonna like that style. That is how you do it. Red Bull Signature Series, the evolution of sports. Whoa! Yes! Let's recap the current positions for you. Rob McCachran leads the way. Dale Dondell, the early Mint 400 leader, sits second. Lofton, Gordon and Tavo Vildosola works his way back into the top five. So this time of the day, after this many miles, what's it like to be the leader? What's it like to be the chaser? 
Either leading or chasing, the same thing applies for these drivers. The trucks have taken a beating all day long, so you're listening for little gremlins, and all you're thinking about, I gotta get to the finish line. Andy McMillan, last year's winner, trying to get back into the top 10. Dan McMillan, brother of Luke McMillan and cousin of Andy McMillan, with a very strong run in 13th. As we watch these drivers go through the dust, we're wondering how far can they see with those lights? Your average car lights, you can see comfortably at about 60 to 70 miles an hour. These lights, when you have clear sky, you can see it over 150. One family that was instrumental in helping the Mint 400 organizers get the course down at Prim this year was the Herbst family, and this is Troy Herbst. Troy running really strong right now, but this is a family affair. His father, his son, everybody races in the Herbst family. It is an off-road racing dynasty, that's for sure. So we'll see how Troy fares at the end of this year's Polaris Razor Mint 400 as we race into the darkness on what has been a gruelling day. Remember, this event was stopped for the very first time ever. If you were to put a percentage to it, Ricky, when you race in the night like this because of the challenges of the terrain and the range of the light, what percentage would you lose? Would you lose 10% of your pace, 5% of your pace? There are those drivers that actually drive faster at night because there's no distractions. They only drive what they can see. But in the dust, you cannot see around it, so you have to just drive that pace. One guy who's seeing perfectly is Rob McCacker, Kelly is at his camp. As we enter the third and final lap, Rob McCachran has the overall lead. James Brown is the head of pit support here at McCachran's pit, affectionately known as Cowboy. So, Cowboy, it seems like everything has been smooth sailing, but any reports from Rob to the contrary? No. Um, basically, we've had a, a, a really good day to this point. Um, can't, can't do better than being first on the road, so there's nobody better. I, I, I'd bet on Rob any day of the week. Any issues that he's reported whatsoever? Any problems along the way? Truck's been fantastic. And is, it, is he just so good at taking care of the equipment, or what do you think makes Rob such a great off-road racer? Absolutely. Rob, Rob is one of the best that I've ever known or been around to take care of equipment. We can always rely on Rob bringing us a truck that's in good shape and can win any time. What's the mood like now around the pit, knowing that he's in the lead on this final lap, but still a lot, lot of time, a lot of miles left? There's some pins and needles. Um, we, until you're across that finish line and until that next truck's across the finish line, you just never know. But you know what? We hope for the best, we plan for the best, and we feel that we've got the best chance and the best crew and the best team out here. We'll see if Rob Mack can do it when we come back. This is the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Back in a moment. Nearing the end of the Polaris Razor Mint 400, part of the Red Bull Signature Series, but there is still some work to do. And for the first time, run with three 120-mile laps, and this race earlier today was stopped because of a three-vehicle accident on the opening lap. That's why we're racing deeper into the night. A slightly different look, but we see the racers going through the Fox Proving Ground. Now they can't see the bottom of those holes, and they try to just skim across the tops, but everybody's dealing with a different problem. I don't care how much money you have in your truck, how well prepared it is. When you run over 300 miles in this desert, there is going to be a problem. Prim Valley Resort way off in the distance that for the competitors just seems so far away, but they'll be there soon to complete the 2015 Mint 400. What a comeback this has been from Justin Lofton. Justin Lofton, we can see, has full power. We can hear the motor is purring. All eight cylinders look very, very strong. And in fourth place is Tavo Vildosola running strong. He too had some early race adversity, had to come back in the Red Bull trick truck now here's something interesting with our leader rob mccachran take a close look only two lights and we as we saw justin lofton go through the pit had three full bars and right now rob mack might be having an alternate to go bad but something is wrong with the rockstar truck think about the extra challenges for rob mccachran vision wise luke mcmillan enjoyed a good day good strong day we should say that lofton with those lights ablaze on corrected time has now moved up to second place. As we listen and we can hear Justin Lofton racing through the desert, everything is bright, everything is strong, if the motor is humming, everything is going right for Justin Lofton at this point.
just his second time, his second event in this new Jimco trick truck. And it's proving to be a nice combination. Father of Abdali Lopez, Juan Carlos Lopez, doing a nice job in the top 10. Now here we have Luke McMillan. We saw the hood off the vehicle earlier today. Luke has been running strong, but now as we listen, on six cylinders. The focus for Luke McMillan is get to the finish line. Even if it is a little bit slower than normal pace. We showed you a little earlier Troy Herbst and he continues his decent run just on the fringe of the overall top 10. Let's check in with Sal Masakela. After long hours battling this course under the sun, which is hard enough, the drivers now need to navigate it in the dark of night. Which one will cross the finish line first and become our 2015 champion? Get involved in the conversation. You can get in touch with us, Red Bull Signature Series, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or RedBullSignatureSeries.com, where we have even more behind-the-scenes content for you. Plus, there's also now the Red Bull TV app, where you can watch this show and every episode from all seasons of the SIG Series. You're welcome. Plenty more racing action to come as we head into these final miles of the Great American Off-Road Race. You're watching the Polaris Razor Mint 400 from the official Prim Valley start finish line only on the Red Bull Signature Series. As we race into the night and race towards the finish, there has been a huge development. The guy who was headed to his first Mint 400 win, Rob McCachran, has radioed in with a problem. Rob, we saw earlier, had just two lights, and somewhere along the way, bent his drive shaft. The reports are that they've made the change and he's back on the road, but he has lost the lead to this driver, Justin Lofton, who is now the leader of the Mint 400. Roaring towards the Red Bull Arts, Justin Lofton, for the first time in his career, is the Polaris Razor Mint 400 winner in just his second event in a trick truck. He's won in a NASCAR truck, and now he's won in a trick truck. The winner of the Mint 400, Justin Lofton. At the end of a long race like this, Lee, there's so much emotion going through you, especially when you win. It's one thing to finish the Mint 400, but to be the first trick truck to cross the finish line, Justin's on top of the world. And the way that Justin constructed this victory, yes, got a little lucky at the end there with Rob McCachran. He was the first big name to be hit with a flat tire and then came back and came back strong. Time now for our Red Bull signature moment and let's see what it took for Justin Lofton to come away with victory. When Justin left the Mint 400 start line today, he was ready to battle the brutal Las Vegas race course and the stacked field of nearly 60 unlimited trucks. So how did he stay in the mix and take home the overall Mint 400 championship? He qualified well, made quick work of his competitors and a flat tire on lap one and kept constant pressure on the leaders. Lofton was in a perfect position on lap two and three to capitalize on mechanical issues experienced by the likes of Bryce Menzies, BJ Baldwin, and later, Rob McCachran. It was his preparation, teamwork, and composure under pressure that helped him fight his way through blinding dust, scorching heat, to make it to the Red Bull finish line first. And that's the reason Justin Lofton is the overall winner and wins the Red Bull signature moment. Let's go to Kelly Stavist, who's standing by with Justin. Justin Lofton made the move into the trick truck division and comes out and wins the Mint 400, the Great American Off-Road Race. How'd you get it done today? Uh, we, uh, you know, a lot of hard work by a lot of great people. And, uh, you know, first off, Jimco for building uh, me one badass trick truck and, and uh, Fox shocks and BF Goodrich tires, trail ready uh, bead locks. Uh, everyone that's on here, Ray, Ray Fields over Dugan's race engines, Fortin transmissions. We couldn't have done it without any one of them. And when we sat down to build this truck, we all sat in the same room and figured out how to build the perfect tr trick truck. And here it is right here. What was the biggest challenge in the race today? Uh, you know, it was not getting overworked. Uh, you know, we got a flat about four miles in uh, to the first lap and staying calm. And uh, we did a great job and, and uh, guys did a great job. Not actually let me know where I was until we uh, pulled in here and uh, it was pretty exciting. 
there are legends of off-road racing who've tried their entire careers to win the Mint 400 and haven't done it. What does it mean to you to add this to your list of accolades? Hey, th uh, this is pretty awesome. This is going to go right next to uh, my Charlotte uh, truck trophy for sure, but this solidifies me in the off-road world, in the trick truck class, and uh, they're going to be hearing a lot of me in the future. Congratulations. Thank you. Justin Lofton has a special place in off-road desert racing as a Mint 400 winner. Ricky, further proof, never over until it's over. Rob McCachran finishes behind Gordon in third. Lofton charged all day long. He got that flat, found his pace, and that truck worked flawlessly all day long. Congratulations, Justin. It was an incredible day. We give our congratulations as well to the top two Class 1 finishing buggies on corrected time. In ninth overall, Sam Berry and Cody Parkhouse in 10th overall. What a day for the Mint 400. Ricky, final thoughts? A lot of things to think about. The big thing was the big crash that stopped the race for a moment. Our thoughts and prayers go out to those drivers, but you got to talk about Justin Lofton coming off with that first trick truck win. He's a NASCAR truck winner. Now he's a Mint 400 winner. Sal? Thank you, Lee, and thanks to you guys at home for joining us and watching the Polaris Razor Mint 400 from Prim near Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. The Great American Off-Road Race once again over delivering incredible performances of both fortitude and resolve with man and machine being tested under the most grueling of conditions the desert can offer. I, for one, look forward to getting a race in this thing next year, but our congrats go out to the top dogs, Justin Lofton on his win here today and Robbie Gordon and Rob McCaffrey rounding out the podium alongside their crews. The Red Bull Signature Series continues with an action-packed weekend of skateboarding first we have a street event inspired by Ryan Sheckler, the inaugural Red Bull Heartlines from Detroit, Michigan. That's on Saturday, August 1st. Then, from the city of Orange, it's the Vans Pool Party, as the top legends and pros take on the very best skate bowl competition. That's the very next day, Sunday, August 2nd, both shows right here on NBC. Once again, thanks for hanging in the desert. On behalf of the entire NBC sports crew, including Lee Diffie, Ricky Johnson, Kelly Stavis, and myself. I will see you next time.